Hey, good morning, church. It's great uh, that uh, you could be here uh, online. Um, I want to first kind of walk you through the process of what happens on Sundays like this. Um, I do not take this uh, part of my job uh, lightly. In fact, it's probably one of the most aggravating, um, frustrating times because everyone has a difference of opinion when it comes to weather. So I I get up at 5, I drive around, uh, I have the MoDOT app that tells me if uh, highways are either snow-packed or partially covered or clear. Uh, We have these wonderful apps on traffic in our area with uh, Google Maps or Apple Maps, and and we can see how traffic's flowing. I I drive around the neighborhood, and this morning I actually uh, got to talk to the person in our parking lot that was clearing it. And he stated that, uh, that things were immediately refreezing. And so after driving around and, and consulting with the staff, who um, uh, some of our staff live uh, south of us quite some ways, uh, Overland, Kansas, and then even up in Weston, uh, we, we decided to call the service. So um, our, your safety is really important to us. And so I want to, first of all, um, if there's any apologies needed for canceling service, but uh, I thank God that you're with us today. Uh, in the, so that, that's kind of how we uh, make this decision of not to, to have church on campus today, but to do this online. Another thing that I want to share with you is also that there, there's so much ways to get, so many ways to get involved in the church. Uh, through your C News, uh, you, you find the way. And this week, and through Advent, there's several ways. There's an Advent calendar that's that's going to tell us every, tell you everything that we're going to do during Advent. A special service on Saturday for a Vesper service for um, not this Saturday, but during Advent on uh, lessons and carols, uh, several things, as, as you can give poinsettias, and so sign up for those as well. Uh, it's an interesting year uh, to be in the Advent season because uh, our Sunday morning, that last Sunday of Advent, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is actually Christmas Eve. So we'll come together and have one service on the 24th, but then that's counted as the fourth Sunday of Advent. And then we'll uh, meet again that evening for Christmas Eve, light the Christ candle, come together and light and spread the light of Christ on that day. So I invite you to particularly pay attention to those Advent calendars, how to get involved, what studies are going on, and uh, how to, uh, well, this unexpected waiting that we do for Advent. We know it, but it's for us to live it as we await the Christ child to come. And so as we prepare ourselves for worship today, let us now pray. Gracious God, whatever we need at this time, if we're still at home in our jammies, if we're on the edge of our couch, if, if, if we're wrapped in a blanket, if the fire is crackling in the fireplace, meet us where we are no matter where we are, O God. And through this, may we not only connect ourselves to you, O God, but know that we are the church. We are connected to one another through grace and love, through faith, hospitality, and through the openness of our hearts to receive you this morning. So whatever we need, Lord, whether it be rest, whether it be your word, whether it be inspiration to live this week, come. Let us open our hearts to you. It is through Christ we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious, most loving God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, the thoughts that we form be right and according to your most holy word. Speak, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Through Christ we pray. Amen. This is a standalone sermon. We just finished our stewardship campaign, so a reminder, if, you're, uh, if your pledge cards are still out there, please send them to the church uh, or bring them by. We'd l- love to, to see you as you do that as well. And, and, and we will start Advent next week. It, it's called the waiting room. Advent is perfect for waiting, right? We're waiting for a Christ child. We're waiting for Christmas. If, if we had that anticipation of like we, when we were children, that Christmas is coming and, and all that excitement was coming, that we would know that the Christ child is coming, what that meant for the world and what it means for the world. In fact, we're kind of caught between two Advents, the one that happened 2,000 years ago and the one that we are waiting for the return of Christ. So we are still in that if we have to be reminded that so we start this waiting game. And so for the next four weeks after this one, we'll start a sermon series called The Waiting Room, uh, talking about each Sunday in Advent and what that can bring for us. Today is a continuation of a sermon that actually I preached on October 15th uh, some times ago. Use the same scripture, so some of you are going to say, Buck, this is the same sermon. No, this is a different sermon, but it's part two of what we did earlier before we started this last sermon series. And so I, I, I want... When we moved to Kansas City, and I've told you some a little bit about it, Colleen and I bought this house in, in an area called Brookside, and, and there were these incredible gardens. And so consider what I knew that this time of year, that snow covered, and coming to understand that, that what it took to care for it, even in the wintertime, to preserve and, and, and understand of what the soil content needs, the moisture from the snow, even like today. See, considering soil conditions that a, need, a plant needs to flourish... Is, is, is something. I, I know that at the 1st of February, uh, we had this ornamental grass called lithropy that w- lined our sidewalks, and I had to mow it down so the crocus could pop up in early spring. And we had so many perennials, incredible things, that uh, a delicate understanding of the balance of what that needs. See, every gardener knows that uh, fertilizer, for lack of a better term, manure, is one of the best fertilizers for our plants. And, and manure, is, well, it's with proper application, right? It's, it's enough of, of, of understanding that it's a delicate balance. So you can apply it to the soil, and, and your plants can thrive and grow and flourish. And, and there's trials and tribulations that can, you know, if you use too much manure, then that's a, a bad thing. It can kill, it can ward off. But, but if we use the right balance, then we can understand what it means to grow and an incredible garden. See, the fertilizer of our faith can lead us also to flourishing. Uh, uh, The right combination of what it means to, 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 to just nurture our foundations, our our life. On another subject, as we talked about it, is on October 15th, was that that God that gives us picture sometimes of, of what it means for the purification of metals. See, if you know that gold comes in different qualities, it, and it's all about the purification process. To purify gold is to removing the non-material that's not gold. 
See, purification requires metal to be heated to extreme temperatures to liquefy it. And so these non-gold elements burn off and burn away. The impurities come to the surface and are removed, leaving it fully true, pure gold. I believe that's what a lot of people describe as the judgment process. See, there's always this wonder of if, if we meet someone face to face in heaven, how can, we, how, how, can, how can we know about the things that they had done wrong in this world? How could we keep those with us? And I, I think that purification burns off. That purification burns away. And so there's a, there's a trueness to each of us when we come to heaven. In our scripture today, Peter tells Christ believers that their faith can also be refined, that, that we, can, we can learn how to burn off our impurities. Our, we can be made pure through, well, as Peter puts it, the pressures that we face. See, we go through trials and temptations. There are, well, unpleasantries in our lives and, and, and what Peter does is he presents to the believers the opportunity to let God purify our faith and make us holy when we focus on God's power and provisions. See, the result of the process of a Christ believer whose faith and life brings praise and glory through Jesus. See, the struggling is for us to patiently endure the distance between suffering and glorifying God. See, Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 1, it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the providences of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadonia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying word of the Spirit. Sanctification means that we mature, we purify, we grow in God's presence at our own level where God meets us no matter where we are, God meets us. He continues to say to the obedience of Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. He opens up with this salutation. But right in verse 3, he dives in. He says, praise be to God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith is shielded by God's power until coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in, his, in the last time. And then here comes the meat of these verses of what I want to focus on today. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all of kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth what than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire may result in what praise, glory, honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you do not see him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of faith, the salvation of your soul. 
See, when reading these scriptures, we point out the chapter and the verse, but we have to remember that these were just letters written. They, it comes later that we started putting verses to each sentence and in each chapters to sections to try to better lift up a, a certain section. And so it is important to remember that these verse numbers were a later addition. There, there's no chapter, no verse, no numbers in the original Greek and Hebrew. And so what we read today, our focus, both verse 6 and 7, comes right slap dab in the middle. And let me recall... 1 Peter chapter 1, 6, that Peter encourages believers to rejoice in the gospel even when they face with grief or a time of trial. The rejoicing of believers is a mark of genuine faith. It's a, it's a tested genuineness. It, it, it reminds me of that, that it's almost a certificate of authenticity, Right? If, if we can take the struggles in life, if we can take all the misfortunes that we have and still know that God is good and God is great, our faith will grow. When Colleen and I lived in England, one of my goals was to buy something older than the United uh, States. So I needed something older than 1776. And so what better yet for me to, is but to buy a pocket watch from 1760. It's interesting, the mechanisms inside, they're chain-driven. I, I have keys to which I have to wind each day. It, there, it actually loses about 15 minutes a day, but I'm pretty sure that it probably lost 15 minutes a day back in 1760. And, and, and searching for something a keepsake, a love that may be worth something of a time to remember, a time that shared a family, a living abroad, that, that we received a letter of authenticity for this pocket watch. See, a certificate of authenticity comes when you purchase an antique we, we love watching maybe the, the PBS show of, of, of those who bring things to uh, antique experts in hopes that we can find worth in something. What Peter tells us is that even though the world may be turning upside down, even though things in our own lives may be turning upside down, that God is our certificate of authenticity. Our love, our joy for having a good and a great God. See, Peter explains this waiting and being patient in this endurance that we need further. Once again, in verse 8, though you do not see him, you know him. We don't see God, but we believe in him. We believe in his power. We believe in his purpose. This should give us joy. Joy brackets the suffering. See, in our own life, faith is in an invisible God, but the knowledge of his love can surround our suffering. The knowledge of his love can surround the trials that we have in life. And it is my hope that it can bring joy. Suffering <laughs> may seem unfair, unnecessary. It, it may be like um, a child once said. I'm not going to say mine. It could be yours. That's unfair. And what was our response? Yes, that's life. Life is unfair. There are some things in our life that we see as unnecessary, but, but nature suggests through the garden, through the certificate of authenticity, that if we want to, the plant to keep flowering, that we want to continue the plant to produce fruit, 
then we need to take care of it. We fertilize, we prune, we pick. See, I think God does this in our lives to help us bear more fruit. If we can see God's goodness and grace, even in our sufferings, then God can use that to bring about beauty. The praise of God's glory and honor should be ours. That we are thankful to God through our sufferings. May we come to know the joy of God and that our fruits become His. Let us pray. God, we are reminded on this Christ the King Sunday that you are the King of glory, that you are the everlasting Son of the Father. We give you our love. We offer our lives. We we give you thanks. So come, Lord, and rule our hearts until your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Lord, and reign over us as we reign with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Christ, our King, keep us calm and faithful in all our troubles. Let us not be afraid, for you rule over all, and your kingdom will come. Give strength and direction to all who seek to do your will, and to all who strive for peace, all who work for righteousness, guide all who proclaim your coming of your kingdom. Lord, your kingdom shall come in us as in heaven. So Christ, may we know that you are the ever-presence in all of life. You are there at the center of power and you empower us. So yet, we feel weak. Humble us into your care. We pray for all in our congregation who need your presence. All in the world who wants to know your love and care. And even through our sufferings, our purification. May we shine with the purest metals of your hope and faith. We ask this in your most precious name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, I'm sorry that we couldn't meet in, in, in person, but it's better to be safe than to have any other accident any other uh, problems in our lives <laughs> that knowing that God brings joy. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week.